Hello, this is Darren Stein. I'm on Ring My Bell. Looking forward to getting your calls. Hello, this is Darren. Oh my god, I got through. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Who's this? My name is Perry. Hey Perry, how's it going? Long Island. I just wanted to call and say that I really love GBF. Thank you. And so it much. even inspired me to try to start an LGBTQ club at my school. Oh, that's so sweet. That's amazing. That's awesome. I hope it, I hope that happens. Any members yet? Anyone in the group? Well, I started a petition and I got like 30. So there's definitely going to be a lot of people there. Oh, that, that's major. Are you? I mean, are there other out kids in your high school? Yeah, a few, like five maybe. Awesome. And have you have you have you turned them on to GBF? <laughs> they need to all watch it because it's like the best movie ever. Hello. Hey, it's Darren. Who's this? Hi, Darren. This is Michael. I'm calling from New York. How are you? Hey, Michael. I'm good. How are you? I am great. I just want to say Jawbreaker is one of my favorite movies. Oh, that's so cool. Um, and I'm just wondering, how much of a bitch was Rose McGowan when you were making that movie? <laughs> boy, oh boy. Well, you know, we were all in our 20s. We were really young. And, you know, I think actors, when they make a movie, they, they kind of like their character, they kind of get into their part a lot. A lot of the actors just sort of like get into it. So I think all the, girl, uh -huh. all the girls in the set, you know, definitely had their moments. <laughs> a, a fun moment with Rose would be... Uh, when Rebecca Gayhart came out of her um, out of the makeup and hair uh, trailer, and she had those little flowers in her hair, you know, for the prom look, and Rose sort of saw that, sort of grabbed the hair guy and dragged him back into the trailer, and came out 20 minutes later with this like silver band weaved up into her hair, and that was pretty epic. It was when she was dating Marilyn Manson, so it'd be fun because he would come to the set with her, and you know, the two of them would, you know, were just sort of like the perfect couple. Like you'd go to their house, and it looked look like a, a Mac counter exploded in their bathroom. Are you guys still friends? Yeah, we are still friends. We're really good friends. I adore her. You know, she's she's a great person, and uh, she and I together, you know, kind of gave birth. I mean, obviously, all the actors did, but I feel like the film feels like a real collaboration, and and we love. I, I always try to share with her all the fan art of the movie, and you know, she was actually at my house my house recently, and she saw I was showing her some some of the art on the walls, and she's like, "Why don't I have any of this? I collect all this stuff too." And she kind of got mad at me <laughs> for not, you know. Um, exposing her to some of the some of the stuff. I didn't know she collected it. I think it's great. Oh, that's cool. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. I love Rose. I mean, she's, there's no tea to be told. Well, I can tell you one thing. I can tell you that when we made the movie, I kind of didn't want to cast her at first because I thought it was too on the nose. I was like, well, you know, um, but it turns out that on the nose was exactly what that film needed. Because I, I saw her in The Gym Generation. That's where I first saw her. But she was, she was perfect for that role. It was incredible. And she was dating Marilyn Manson. So and she was cool enough to, I was like, hey, do you think Manson would do a cameo in the film? And she's like, sure. But it was fun seeing him in the makeup trailer putting on his whole like Sergio Valente like porn stash and the suit. It was all Sergio Valente. He was really getting into it. And I, I remember there was one funny day where he walked up to me and like I was wearing a hoodie and he put the hood over my head and he was like, homo one Kenobi. That was pretty funny. He, he's a cool guy. Hey, it's Darren who's calling. Hi, this is Peaches Christ. Peaches Christ, wow. How's it going, Peaches? Good, how are you, Darren? I'm good. It's a little strange calling you since you're one of my best girlfriends, but I just wanted to call and say hello since this is officially going to be for viewing audience's pleasure. I wish you could see me right now. I'm literally standing in half drag. You would think it was so scary because we're doing our photo shoot for Halloween, uh -huh. and I'm dressed as uh, Tranton LaVey. That's amazing, I love that. Hail Satan, everybody. Oh, well, so. you guys should also know that I produced a movie that Peach's alter ego directed called All About Evil, which is pretty cool. And you are a flawless producer, and you're a flawless filmmaker. Thank you. You're a flawless everything. You're a flawless director, friend, drag queen, the works. Hey, this is Darren. Who's this? Jeremy Dolce. <laughs> oh, my God. How are you? Jeremy is a fan of mine, and we're friends on... Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, but we haven't even met in person. Jeremy has a tattoo, uh, a quote from Jawbreaker, tatted on his wrist. It says, I killed the teen dream. And then your other wrist. It's my wrist... favorite movie. <laughs> is it really? Because I know that your other wrist is the craft. Yes. Right now, I think you're the only fan that I know who has a line from the film tattooed on their body. And I, that makes you, as far as I'm concerned, my number one. You should come to LA in November because there's going to be a 15th anniversary screening of Jawbreaker at the New Art on November 7th. So that should be fun. Oh my God, I need to. Put it in your calendar, November 7th. My question is like, what's your favorite scene in Jawbreaker? Hmm. Oh, well, the, blow, the, big, the big stick scene for sure. That, well, that scene, and I love, um, I don't know, I love like the scene where G when Fern's pulling all the posters down in the hallway. 
And the sex scene was weird when they were having sex in that bed. With the dead body under the bed, it was totally creepy. Yeah, I know, that was crazy, yeah. Like, see, movies are not like that anymore, you know? <laughs> They're boring. They're so boring. <laughs> every, every good teen movie needs a dead body. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you for calling. I'm I so glad you to... called. I, I love him. He's my favorite. He's my number one fan. Just to have someone tattoo a line from your movie on their body is pretty intense. Hello, this is Darren. Who's calling? Hi, Darren. Yes. Hi, it's Blake. <laughs> hey, Blake, how are you? Good, how are you? Oh, fantastic. I was just upstairs and I knew you were downstairs and I had a couple of questions about, because you know Jawbreaker is one of my favorite movies. I know, and I love you for that. You're my fa you, and you're one of my favorite people. I have a question. Yes. Why Jawbreaker? What came first, Jawbreaker or the story? And like, did you consider another kind of candy or something else altogether? Well, you know, when I made Jawbreaker, I set out to make a horror film. And then I was like reading about horror and like realizing that horror could be like everyday life, something suddenly good, something very simple can go wrong and it can, it can become horrifying. And then I was kind of fascinated by the, these girls in high school who kidnapped their friends on their birthdays. Cause I thought it was such a kind of a violent ritual to like prank your friends and kidnap them out of bed and tie them to the flagpole at school in their bra and panties and all that. And then I thought, well, what is the, uh, you know, the violent high school version of a ball gag, a jawbreaker? It would be kind of funny as, a, as like a teen girl approximation of a ball gag. And then the jawbreaker became, all the colors, you know, all the kind of the jewel tones of the candy became like the, the primary colors of the film. And it just sort of, there's a lot of like circular and cylindrical like um, imagery throughout the film. So the jawbreaker, and it's the whole like surreal notion of this, this, this candy that also is called a jawbreaker uh, uh -huh. was sort of like that dark element of the film of like these girls you know, are, are sweet on the outside, but they can also be dangerous. So it just became a big, a big metaphor for the whole thing. Thank you so much for all your calls. I had a great time. Um, you can look forward to Jawbreaker the Musical, which is coming to, the first pro production will be in Seattle early next year. It's got an awesome pop score. It's so much fun. I'm actually writing the book to the musical, which is great to be involved with it. Also, um, Seeds of Yesterday, the final Flowers in the Attic movie for Lifetime. I'm writing the screenplay for that, and that comes out, I believe, early next year. Three, five, three, five. And do not forget to subscribe. Okay. And don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> and please don't forget to subscribe to WOW TV. And don't forget to prescribe all the drugs to me. Thank you. We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. And don't forget to subscribe to WOW Presents.